So I started my carnivore journey and here I should probably interject, you know, I'm actually a, a professor at Stanford in the department of bioengineering. I'm in the school of medicine and the school of engineering. I've been a professor for 27 years. Before that, I did a bachelor's in chemical engineering, PhD in chemical engineering at Berkeley, a postdoc at UCSF in pharmaceutical chemistry. So I actually do have, you know, credentials following all the regular nutritional guidelines. You know, initially I was so trusting of everything, everybody. I trusted doctors. I trusted, you know, I would say now that, I mean, that trust is pretty much gone, but I heard about carnivore from a good friend. And what I saw is that, you know, my health just every single day got better and better and better. My mood got better. And now I would say it's not even, you almost can't put a name on it, on what gets better because everything gets better. Nothing is more critical to our health than Hello and welcome, Carrie here from Healing Humanity, the power of a proper human diet. Welcome, Annalise. Thank you so much for joining me. How are you? I am feeling wonderful today. Thank you for asking. Well, I'm looking forward to talking to you. I saw you did a couple of videos with my good friend, Dave Mack, who's just incredible, talking to lots of carnivores. And I wanted to learn more about your story. Could you maybe start off and just tell us a little bit about your background? Yeah, so uh, I am 55 years old. Um, I was born in October 1968 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So I'm a Wisconsinite like your family yeah. is. And, uh, you know, I do I do, I do, want to say there is something, you know, I feel there's something very special about Wisconsinites, which is that, you know, these are some of the nicest, most sincere, straightforward people you're going to meet on this planet. And I think that's no coincidence, Carrie, that, you know, you're making such a huge difference in the carnivore community because of those traits that you have. You know, you're just a, a great person. And this is true of your whole family. And we've all really just loved getting to know you and your family and learn so much from you. And uh, it just shows you how much one person can do if they're willing to kind of stand up and be authentic and just really care about other people and want them to be well, which I, I, is totally this place that you're coming from. And, you know, so I thought I'd add my voice to this wonderful community, which I've been following closely for four years. Wow. So I started my carnivore journey um, in a serious way, January of 2020, but I heard about carnivore from a good friend in probably late 2017 i had a friend that has some health issues that he you know he's been struggling with uh, ehlers danlos syndrome his whole life and everyone in his family has it it's a genetic disease and he was just trying to be effective um, in his job we worked together and he found carnivore and started living mostly on ground beef being very strict with it and it it really you know put all of his symptoms of fatigue and chronic pain and depression into remission very quickly and he was so astonished by those positive results his name is Joshua that he you know as as a friend to me said you know Annalise I I see you kind of struggling because at that time 2017 I really was you know I'd been trying to lose weight and get fit, you know, it, it gets harder after you're about say 46, 47 years old. Um, you know, it just, your, your metabolism slows down and you have to do something, you know, to try to stay fit. And I tried, um, you know, sort of following all the regular nutritional guidelines. You know, initially I was so trusting of everything, everybody. I trusted doctors. I trusted you know, I would say now that I mean, that trust is pretty much gone, but I had total trust initially. And, and, and I, I even tried, you know, green juicing, you know, subsisting mostly on a juice made of uh, Granny Smith apples, lemons, ginger, cucumber, kale. And all that gave me was incredible joint pain. And I just got really, really super fat on juice, which, you know, we now understand just because it makes your blood sugar just skyrocket every time you have a, a juice like that, you know, it causes every calorie you eat to go into your fat cells. You know, Dr. Ben Bickman and, and uh, Dr. Anthony Chafee and 
um, Dr. Ken Berry taught us that. And so I did, I was not aware of that stuff until, um, you know, I started to look into this after my friend benefited from it. So I thought about it for about two years. I thought about trying it, but it seemed really extreme. You know, when you first hear about it, you, it it's, it's hard to believe that that could be the way just eating beef, bacon, um, butter eggs. It's hard to believe that that could be the way to be healthy, but it turns out that almost immediately when I started it, you know, my, my hunger, my sort of sharp, insistent hunger signals went away. Then I was able to do intermittent fasting. And after a while of being strict with carnivore, which I started January, 2020, I very easily with no discomfort or pain got to one meal a day, you know, which I would have in the late afternoon. And mostly I was focusing on, on steak and butter and some eggs, but less just because the beef was so satiating. And what I saw is that, you know, my health just every single day got better and better and better. My mood got better. Um, you know, I had early stage type two diabetes, which runs in my family. So I had obesity, I had skin tags, I had extremely painful plantar fasciitis in my feet. Um, I had Hashimoto's thyroiditis where my, you know, I had essentially an autoimmune reaction to my own thyroid hormones and enzymes, which, you know, makes them inactive, which is terrible for your body. And what, all of that went away. And now I would say it's not even, you almost can't put a name on it on what gets better because everything gets better. Like you, you even look at you. I mean, Carrie, we just, right. Don't you just like love being in your own skin now? A hundred percent. I share the same feeling you have where you, it's hard to describe to people. It's like, uh, the thing that's the, the thing that gets frustrating with me though is it's so amazing it's so much you write things down you can't believe how much has changed but um i was fortunate for the documentary to interview dr ken berry and he was like yeah but really that's just how all humans would be if we were poisoning ourselves with all that crazy food we were eating and if we we're putting the proper fuel in that would be the baseline but it seems extraordinary because we're used to what we were doing formerly i'm like wow I didn't really think about it that way but yeah, so isn't it amazing now, like you are walking around just feeling like a million bucks and I feel the same way. I couldn't believe this morning, like, you know, I got up and I just had three soft boiled eggs when I started to get a little tiny bit hungry and you know, give it, give about an hour and a half for those eggs to really kind of kick in and you just, ah, you just feel like. I can't even describe it. It's exactly right. like you say. It's like superhuman, but it's really not. It's just natural human, the way we would all feel. And I just have to think that if we really get this movement rocking and rolling with your film and people are aware, like, hey, you know, lots of people that seem sane, you know, are telling me that they feel better than they've ever felt in their lives. Even like me, I'm 55, right? I'm 55 and I feel better than I felt probably when I was 25. Wow. It's so amazing. It's, I, I'm seeing it over and over again where it's almost becoming this new normal. Um, my, my good friend, Dr. Prosperous, he's going through stage four cancer right now. He's 43. I've never seen anyone with more energy. He said the same thing you just said. He's like, I, I feel like I'm 20. I have more energy now than ever just from eating the proper human foods. I, I I feel the same thing you do. It feels superhuman. And it it's one of the reasons I think I'm so passionate about carnivores, just because so many people in this world are never going to know what it's like to feel this way. They're just walking around with that brain fog forever. And it's such a shame. I, I end a lot of my videos like that. I'm like, you just deserve to live at least one day feeling like this because it's just incredible. Yeah, and just you know, watching your your kids pick it up and kind of segue into carnivore, and now they can cook steak. You don't have to make them all steak every day, which is a lot of work. A little bit. <laughs> they can, but they don't. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. They still prefer it because you do such a good job. And actually, I have a son who's 12 and a half and he's also pure carnivore. And oh, I mean, wow. I, he has other things available to him. You know, I, I buy other things for him, carbs, but, you know, he mostly just isn't hungry. So he just focuses on his steak and eggs. And then and he's, you know, just he's growing like an inch a month, you know, wow. eating, eating steak and eggs. And uh, the other thing, you know, I, I made like a carnivore primer or primer that I email my friends when they, you know, people see me and they go, wow, Annalise, you look amazing. What did you do? And I'll say, well, you know, I actually just cut out all the carbs. I just eat beef and eggs mostly and butter. And of course, you know, really, and I, and I have free, you know, freezers full of beef because I'm so scared of not having enough beef now. And I got chickens so that I have you know, a constant supply of uh, fresh um, organic eggs. And, oh, nice. And really, you know, good source of butter and that's all you need. And you just try to explain to people, look, you say, you, you have to just try this for at least 30 days. And I really don't think if you do, that if you do try it, I don't think you'll go back. And it just based only on how you feel. And I think it's astonishing you know, the, what, the fact that your depression, can you remind me, Carrie, you know, that you had real clinical diagnosed depression and they tried to treat you with like every known psychiatric drugs. And I think that whole industry is a complete travesty, by the way, very oh. dangerous. Um, and it's wonderful. You managed to get off all those psych meds without suffering too much um, from the, you know, withdrawal of them. But how long did it take you to see your mood really brightening after you cut the carbs. And then I want to talk about why that might be. Yeah, great question. So most of my adult life, I had depression and it took me years before I finally went in to get help for it. Thankfully, my wife insisted, but I was suicidally, hopelessly depressed on every antidepressant. And the, the worst thing was when I was at the worst depression I ever had, you go to the doctor and they're like, we can try this SSRI, but it's going to take three months before we know if it works or not. And I'm like, I don't even know if I can make it through this day, let alone three more months to see if these things work. Of course, I waited the three months. I did exactly what they told me at the end of three months. Nothing. It, it was like I wasn't even taking anything. They're like, oh, we'll just have to up the dosage and you'll have to try for three more months. I did that for a year, I think, on the first medication. And then for the next like 10 years, it was just one medication one after, after another. another. And then they stack them up. Yep. And you have no idea what is doing what and what is the side effect. And then if you complain about it, they just tell you, well, you know, they kind of treat you dismissively like, well, since you're crazy, yeah. you know, then they don't listen to you. And so it's it's just the most frustrating, degrading experience. And, you know, I should mention, like, I I had a real tragedy with regard to my husband and withdrawal from benzodiazepines, you know, he, he killed himself. This is oh. over a year ago because of those side effects of how difficult it is getting off of them. And, you know, so I just think I want to really encourage anybody who sees this, like before you would try psychiatric medications, try cutting out all the carbs, try doing really strict carnivore. And I, I really think, you know, that it, it's very likely that um, you'll experience just just feeling better. And there, there was a piece of this whole story. Oh, let me go back to Jeff DeProsperous because I've been watching some of his videos and I've watched you two talk and tracking his story. Think about the fact that through the combination of carnivore and fasting, those two things both very significant in his self treatment along with chemo, right? Like 40 rounds of chemo. He's that is the, one of the bravest man I've ever heard about, you know, even though his cancer is stage four and it's all throughout his liver, you know, it, he's still really robust and energetic and, you know, the cancer can't kill him. You know, cancer is just, you know, a tissue that's not under proper growth control. It's, you know, it, it will only kill you if it kind of takes over and blocks other normal functions. And he's been able to prevent that by kind of starving the cancer metabolically by not giving it any sugar at all. Yeah. Right. So right. that'll keep it slow growing. 
And then fasting is another way that, you know, turns on autophagy and helps your body um, clear out all kinds of things that shouldn't be there, old damaged cells, pathogens. And, you know, let me tell you, I think the fact that major depression can respond so quickly, like it seems like within a week yeah. or two, right, to, to cutting out all the carbs, what could be going on there? Certainly, as you've been highlighting, you know, in the pre past few weeks, you've talked a lot about how inflammation is so damaging, right? And that is absolutely true. And, you know, the whole issue with inflammation, and here I should probably interject, you know, I'm actually a, a professor at Stanford in the Department of Bioengineering. I'm in the School of Medicine and the School of Engineering. I've been a professor since January 97. So I, I've been a professor for 27 years, um, which is virtually half of my life. Okay. I've been in academics. And before that, I did a, a you know, bachelor's in chemical engineering, PhD in chemical engineering at Berkeley. It's one of the top departments in the world and a postdoc at UCSF in pharmaceutical chemistry. So I actually do have, you know, credentials and I followed all of this stuff and I even teach graduate courses at Stanford about the human immune system and about biotechnology. And of course, some of the hottest things in biotechnology right now in terms of technology development are immunotherapy for cancer and, you know, just trying to understand how to retask white blood cells so that they'll clear, clear cancer for you. So far that doesn't really work for solid tumors, which is what Jeffrey DeProsperous has, but, um, did I say his name right? Is it Jeffrey? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it does work for blood cancers. But, you know, here's the thing. Yes, um, immunotherapy, which is just trying to get your immune system to properly recognize cancer, can put a cancer into remission. But even though that therapy costs at least a half a million dollars, and that doesn't count the hospital stay, you know, when you include the hospital stay and recovery with the white blood cell um you know, immunoengineering therapy, usually those cancers still relapse within about a year and a half. Mm. And when they relapse, they're going to be immune to that treatment now. So it's really not a solved problem. But I think that taking a natural approach like Jeffrey has, you know, where you completely starve the cancer of sugar, and you give your body every opportunity um, to, to be in a state of autophagy. At the very least, you know, as he has been doing, you should be able to kind of halt the growth of the cancer and, and stay in remission. They, Jeffrey has small children, so, you know, young kids. So it's, it's so important for him to just have every single day that he can get and live it to the fullest. But for those of us that are fortunate enough to still not have cancer, not have any serious disease like that, you know, the best way to never get it is to just cut all the carbs. Yes, you know? yes. Oh, infection. That's what I want to bring to this conversation, you know, as another sort of PhD. Um, I don't have an MD, but I have a PhD and I, I uh, interact with it and collaborate with a lot of MD researchers. A lot of cancers are actually the result of chronic um, low level infections in the body that can't be cleared. Mm -hmm. And let me just run through a list of examples, right? Cervical cancer can be ca caused by human papillomavirus. Stomach cancer can be caused by the bacterium Helobacter pylori. Um, Kaposi's sarcoma can be caused by Epstein-Barr virus. Multiple sclerosis is caused by Epstein-Barr virus. Um, liver cancer is caused by hepatitis C virus. And, you know, this, this, so this is just kind of across the board. Virtually every cancer seems to have in its initial, what we call etiology or, or cause, you know, the chronic low level infection that your body didn't clear that causes inflammation mm. inflammation ha can have a mutagenic effect so it'll cause dna changes locally in the tissue 
where the infection is taking hold and there is that inflammation. And, you know, th that's why I think carnivore can prevent cancer because when you are in a low insulin fasted state, and of course, carnivore is a fasting mimicking state because you have eaten food and you do you did nourish your body, but you kept your insulin low because you didn't eat sugar, right? Then your immune system is at its strongest when your insulin is low. And mm -hmm. that means that you keep those chronic infections under um, control. You're never going to eliminate all of the organisms from your body that live on and within you, you know, in your gut, on your skin, within your tissues, right? You have bacteria, you have viruses, you have fungi, countless different kinds of each one of those, right? So you, you can never vaccinate against all those pathogens effectively because we just can't accept that many vaccines as what there is. And we don't even know which ones most of the time are causing the problem, right? right. Certainly not in real time. We don't know. And, you know, one thing I want to say also about the brain and, the, you know, people had believed that the human brain, what, you know, there was sort of an assumption that it was sterile, right? Because the brain is, you know, inside our skull. It seems like things can't get at it. Well, unfortunately, that's not the case. Because um, your whole face and head, you know, they, of course, have all these nerves, right? You have innervation and, and there's a nerve bundle um, called the trigeminal nerve, which is really the one that, uh, you know, terminates at the lips. And, you know, where, where nerves terminate in your body, they, um, they have a little curly cue and they come very close to the skin. And that's why you have sensation. Well, unfortunately, nerves get infected with viruses, neurotropic viruses, and those viruses can follow along the body of the nerve and get straight into your brain, mm -hmm. along with fungi, along with bacteria. So the brain is not sterile. R new research uh, from Baylor is showing. And probably dementia is caused, again, by chronic infections and, again, by the inflammation that those cause. You know, the infected brain cells get cleared away by your, the immune system of the brain. And so by the time someone is losing their memory and losing their, you know, function, it's usually about a third of the brain is gone. Mm. It's just been engulfed. So nothing is more critical to our health then quick interruption thank you so much for watching if you're interested in learning more about our documentary healing humanity the power of a proper human diet or supporting it please visit donate.healinghumanity.movie our goal is to reach millions of people that are hopeless right now and sharing the examples of real people over the course of one year that are undertaking a proper human diet to overcome obesity type 2 diabetes depression anxiety fertility issues we couldn't do it without you we thank you so much we are also selling these shirts healing humanity the power of a proper human diet every penny we get from those goes towards the documentary and last we have memberships if you click the little join button it's best to do it on desktop under any one of my youtube videos you can join and become a member we have hundreds of members right now we do members only videos we do members only behind the scenes you can email me as a member and i'll answer you um, and every penny from that goes to support the documentary and the last thing is we have these redmonds portable salt shakers these things are awesome you can get the best salt you can take it with you we sell these on the website along with our water bottles and cutting boards and every penny from all of those goes 100% towards supporting the documentary. You can also sign up for our newsletter, which is completely free. All of these links are in the description below. Thank you so much for your support. Now back to today's video. Nothing is more critical to our health than keeping our immune system in tune and strong as much as we can every day. And I think you know, given that the earliest symptoms of dementia, I don't know if you know this, Carrie, but when someone is going to get dementia, the first symptoms are mood changes, personality changes, and depression and anxiety. Mm. And that all comes before they start forgetting words, forgetting their keys and all that. So, you know, depression 
is something that should be taken extremely seriously. Depression and anxiety, like that black mood that you were experiencing, you know, and that probably was the result of, of infection. You know, it was nothing to do with what you did or what you thought, you know, it's something real that causes anxiety and depression. Right. Yeah. I'm so glad you said that. I mean, that's the reason I wanted to do this documentary was for people with depression and anxiety. And I have heard through my YouTube videos, so many comments from people. That's the most prevalent comment I hear over and over again. I I had horrible depression. I, I had a, I got a friend, Todd Bachness, the carnivore cure. This guy was suicidally depressed his entire life. And he's angry because he's like, I was on all these SSRIs, all this medication. He's like, within three weeks, completely gone forever yeah. like no more depression and i hear that over and over and over again i'm so fortunate too we're having dr mm -hmm. georgia ede harvard trained psychiatrist it's part of the documentary she just wrote a book called um change your diet change your mind and it gets into all of this with depression and anxiety and ptsd and schizophrenia and it's just incredible it's 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 exactly like you said it's just the the foods we're eating your point on the um the infections too that's so interesting to me Unfortunately, my my dad was recently diagnosed with cancer mm, and he sorry. was, yeah, he was in and out of the hospital over the last two years, I think probably six times where he stayed for three or four days. And every time they ran every test under the book and they're like, it's some sort of infection. We don't know what it is until finally he was diagnosed with the cancer. And of what course, kind it, of cancer is it? it's, I believe it's MDS. I think hmm. it's, it's kind of a rare, very odd blood cancer. And from what he tells me, I don't know how much of this is true or not. It's very mild at this point. Um, but yeah, well, I will send you an email because I am going to send you a supplement stack that I, I really think can help keep blood cancer at bay based on the research that I'm doing. So oh, I'm actually great. my research at Stanford is focused on strengthening immunity to prevent dementia, wow. different strategies to do that. So but so is your biggest advice, because it was interesting what you said before about strengthening the immune system for cancer, for all these other reasons. The most interesting thing with Jeffrey DeProsperous, who we were talking about earlier, was when we interviewed him, he, he looked right in the camera and he said, I believe I caused my cancer uh, from the foods I was eating, from the stresses I was putting on the body, environmental issues. Unlike what he was told, there, he was just told, we don't know. It's, you know, it's a fluke. Maybe it's genetic. We can't tell you. So uh, that's been one of my powerful sort of whys going forward. And I don't know what your thoughts are on this, but like I, so much is, has reversed for me on carnivore. The depression, anxiety is completely gone. I have none of it anymore. I've got endless energy. The arthritis is gone. I sleep like a baby. I feel like my immune system is so strong. I'm not worried about getting sick from anything. I think that happens for a lot of people, though. And then they're like, oh, I'm good now. Maybe I'll go back to moderation or I'll start eating that stuff again, which I'm never going to do because I made that mistake on keto uh, before. But um, long story short, my big why going forward now is I really feel like my odds of getting dementia or Alzheimer's or cancer or just arthritis and mobility issues and all these aches and pains that people have as they age. I'm not worried about those yeah. at all. It's like such a powerful thing if you think in the future. I think so many people are just focused right in the present. Yeah, exactly. And I will also tell you, you know, I, you know, I had done for, for a while just because, you know, part of my job, you know, we, we, when we're recruiting new faculty, et cetera, we have a lot of nice dinners out and parties and get togethers where there's wine and nice food. And, and I did find that if I cheated even a little bit, like with a glass of wine, wow, I really didn't feel as good. And once you, have the experience of really feeling tip top. You just, you don't want to do that to yourself, but you're right. Like it gives you exactly what you're describing. Like when you feel really good, when you look, you know, you're looking your best, right. And, and you're in a great mood. So you're fun to be around, you know, like people enjoy your company. I mean, think about that for you, how before you were kind of hiding out down yeah. in your man cave and, not talking to anybody, but now you're out like engaging with the whole world, giving all these people hope and healing. You know, like I, I really love following the story of Bill Knott and how he's doing so incredibly well. I, I also lived in Alaska for five years as a kid. Oh, wow. Alaska, so 
I really identify with that story. It's so and beautiful then, there. I keep telling people we film there and I'm like, this camera doesn't do it justice. Like if you ever get an opportunity to go to Alaska, it's, I can't wait to go back. We're going back uh, this summer to film Bill when he's ready, walking out the front door, which is seems like it's going to be sooner than we anticipated based on the progress he's having, which is amazing. Yeah. And it's so, you know, we all are learning from his story. And I have to tell you, I, in terms of converts, like people I've, I've gotten to go with a carnivore lifestyle. Of course, my son, one of my children, my two older kids, you know, they, they're in college and they're in dorms. And so they kind of don't, you know, it's harder, harder for them, but hopefully they're eating more meat, at least based on what I've said, but my, um, but also one of my colleagues at Stanford, another professor in chemical engineering, Jim Swartz went carnivore and looks 20 years younger. And, wow. you know, it's it said that he feels so good. And then um, also I, I have a new significant other for like two and a half months, a guy named Brian, and he, he was already pretty healthy, but he, he had fallen off a high ladder and broken his back a year ago. And he's, he's now eating mostly steak and eggs and butter. And, uh, you know, he's definitely, he cannot believe he said like, you know, he's, he realizes now he's never had proper digestion in his whole life. Mm. You know, he, even though he always did eat meat, but he always mixed it with plants and carbs and that was enough to mess him up. So now he's eating, you know, only steak and eggs and, and other meats. And wow, you know, he's just like, this is magic. I mean, this is, changes my life. Just having great <laughs> digestion is huge. And people don't realize that, you know, it's all, it's what you leave out and what you don't eat is just as important. But once you figure that out, now what do you have? You have incredible hope for the rest of your life being awesome. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's just amazing. That's so cool. How you're, you're converting people. It, uh, that's what I think is going on. It's I think carnivore or eating proper human diet is really spreading much further and wider than people realize because it just works so well. They see your success. They're like, I want to do what she's doing. Yeah, It's, it's happening for me too because my whole family now after you're on carnivore, as you mentioned, some of them were tinkering with it here or there. As of right now, the whole family is on carnivore. Two of my daughters are a little ketovore, still a little bit of salad, lettuce stuff here or there, but they're probably 95% carnivore. But my mom and my stepdad are, both of my sisters are too. And one of my sisters didn't even tell me for the longest time. She was, she's like, I have been doing it for months now, but it's, but now each of them, they're like, they're like a shining example to their peer group. Like my mom, She's got people that are her friends that are her age and things like that. They're like, what, what are you doing? Like, tell me what you're doing. And so it's spreading to them. So it, it seems like, I don't know, it's hard because I'm so close to carnivore, but it seems like it's really spreading around, which is a great thing. I feel like it's spreading faster and faster. And, you know, it's it's like it it's it's a very kind of a spiritual journey. But at the same time, your health just shines from you, right? So right. people that knew you before, you walk around and you just look different than most people. You look like you glow. And I was telling Dave that even, you know, no matter whether you're like a naturally good looking person or not, glowing health is always beautiful. Yes. In any person, you know, and we are kind of evolved to perceive that health or lack of health in each other. So it's like we have a very visceral reaction to seeing a really healthy person. And you, we realize like we don't see that very often or we hadn't been right. I mean, you and I, you're, you're, you're quite a bit younger than me, but even so, like we grew up in a time when, mo when we were little, most people were healthy. And then, you know, as the food got more and more toxic, and I also think, you know, people are very much over medicated in every possible way you can consider. People are just they're they're having too much medication and they're having too many, not just carbs, but you know, especially like lots and lots of toxic additives, pesticides that are on plants that we don't know about, herbicides, all that stuff. We have no idea. And sadly, especially I'd say in the United States and Canada, right? Where 
I feel that our regulatory agencies are pretty much captured by the industries they're supposed to regulate and they're sadly corrupt. Um, you know, it just, and, and even the research publications, you know, are influenced, unfortunately, by monetary and political types of considerations, which very large corporations are behind. You know, we, we have to turn to each other because we can trust each other, you know? Right. And, and, and we're all just ordinary people. The one thing we do know, and we're all aware now, we cannot trust any kind of corporate source of information of any kind. And if you look at how they got their food pyramid inverted, like unbelievable. And think about how much, yes, it's completely upside down. And the vast majority of the official health recommendations that you would get these days, they're exactly backwards. Mm -hmm. Whatever they tell you to do, don't do that. And I'm saying that as a professor at Stanford. And, you know, I think when, you know, when even someone who's part of the establishment says, don't do anything they tell you to do, you know, that is a sad state of affairs. Right. I, it's it's one of my realizations afterwards because like you you mentioned earlier trust and trusting doctors and things like that I had so I all my trust was in the doctors like these guys went to school for so long they know everything but it's sad but true like if I would have done the opposite every one of them none of them mentioned nutrition not one of them never I'd have been so much better off uh, than I am now and to your point too with like the pesticides the herbicides the glyphosate the forever chemicals when I grew up I'm like I ate pretty bad, much better than this generation, though. I ate processed food, and now my my kids, their generation, it's like ultra, ultra processed foods. The kids are walking around with these Starbucks drinks, all of this sugar. Like the human body was never intended to consume liquid sugar in those amounts. It just has no idea what to do with it. So that was the reason, like with the documentary, I was so passionate about it initially for depression, anxiety, for all of the health problems in the world. But I'm like, this next generation of kids. I think it's going to be like a couple of years from now, we're like, what is going on with depression rates and cancer rates and illnesses and type two diabetes going younger and younger and younger. Um, it's just, it's so backwards. It's so far in the wrong direction, but I, I love what you said too about the carnivore glowing thing. I don't know if you've had the opportunity yet to attend like a carnivore conference or meetup. We had one at the Montello theater right here, not too long ago with Dr. Hampton. And it was very cool. It was great having Dr. Hampton on the screen, but Afterwards, my reaction was kind of what you were just talking about, seeing all of these glowing individuals, <laughs> the energy in the room, you could feel it. I'm like, we left there and I was like, I just want to hang out with more carnivores. <laughs> That's all I want to do. It's it's so weird because in our day to day life, we're not usually around them other than on the Internet. But being in a room full of people just glowing like that with that energy, uh, it sure is something. Oh, wow. I definitely want to come to a carnivore conference and. And, you know, um, I'm just so happy that you're doing this documentary. I hope it's going to be huge. And I would say, like, we can save this generation of kids because we know, and I didn't even mention this, right, but I had gotten up to 197 pounds, and I lost 65 pounds doing this diet. And my weight now, 132, is the same as when I was 16 years old. Wow. But like I said, I even feel better than when I was 16. I mean, I think, you know, when I was 16, I was super active, but I remember I didn't feel, I thought I was so chubby, right? <laughs> but, um, you know, like I w have always been really active and it's wonderful to get back to that and kind of be aging in reverse like we all are. Yeah. And these kids, this generation of kids, they can totally be saved because I bet you they could get better in, you know, three or four weeks if you just switch them to a great diet. Right. To do we have to get everybody off the po the poison corporate food we're gonna have to put a lot of chemical engineers right and i say this as a chemical engineer i've put a lot of chemical engineers out of business and uh you know they're just gonna have to stop making all that poison food it's right. nobody nobody should be eating it no animal should be eating that kind of stuff Imagine if we, I, I had that analogy before, like, like the deer in the wild. If you ever saw a deer in the wild with its belly hanging down and its fur missing and it's all arthritic, you'd be like, what's wrong with that? But if you fed it the food, we were feeding humans Doritos and ice cream and Diet Mountain Dew. 
it would end up looking just like that. But we, we wouldn't do that to animals, but yeah, humans are doing it. Um, yeah. Do you remember the, that? Like when you were a kid, did you eat like strawberry pop tarts and Cheerios and all that kind of carby food when you were a kid? Uh, a little bit, not as much as this generation, but I remember the Cheerios and then maybe later more of the junkier stuff. But yeah, this next generation, it's even, I think it's even worse. It's just, way more processed and everywhere like the fast food stuff too every now and then like very rarely as a kid we go get fast food and now it seems like this next generation it's, all they're eating is fast food it's like the amount of fast food i used to eat would be like once every two weeks and then we would eat at home every day it seems like they're going out to eat fast food for two weeks in a row and then they eat at home like one time it's like completely wow, opposite yeah. it just seems so changed the good thing though is i i love what you said i didn't really think about that it's a good optimistic view is the change happens so quickly, yeah. uh, especially for children. And what I'm noticing with my children that because they tinkered with carnivore when I first started a year ago, but they're all on board now. The thing that's changed is, especially like with my daughter, Katie, she is getting upset and fired up. Like, wait a minute, what was I eating? What is there's pesticides? What forever chemicals? These are going to stay in my body like almost forever. What is this yeah. stuff? And she's starting to learn more about it. So it's very encouraging for me because she's she's getting fired up about it. And then I'm like, oh, good. I can kind of pass the torch. <laughs> You're going to have to take this for your next generation because it's going to be a grassroots sort of effort to change things. Yeah. Um, it's all going to come from this community, just talking to other people. And, you know, I'm really grateful. Like, you know, YouTube hasn't been censoring any carnivore content yet, but you know, we do threaten kind of big food. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually we are going to be getting people to stop buying a lot of things that are not good for them that have a lot of seed oils and, and these forever chemicals. And, you know, that is the main thing, like uh, the beauty, the beauty of carnivore, right. Is all of these chronic diseases that most of which are not fully understood, meaning they don't really deeply understand the cause of the disease in its step-by-step -step process. It, it, it's like we no longer are going to even need to study these diseases if we can just convince people to eat this way, you know, to focus on um, animal-derived foods, but especially beef, butter, eggs. Beef being important because that animal has four stomachs and it really just clears out everything on the way to producing its tissues. It's just such a clean food. Beef is clean, eggs are clean. Um, and, and the better the animals were treated, the healthier the meat and the eggs are gonna be. We don't even need to study the diseases because if, if you just focus on eating those things, they will all go away and you don't need to, you know, the whole thing is not to go back, right? Right. Yeah, it, it's like I was trying to think for the documentary of a good visual or analogy, and it's like we're taking a hammer and pounding our finger with it every single day. Yes. It's all inflamed and bloody. We keep and then we go to the doctor, and he's like, "I don't know what to do. Here's some medicine." No, just yeah. stop hitting yourself with the hammer and see what happens. <laughs> it's just getting back to that the root cause of these things. Like when people talk about, "Are we ever going to find a cure for cancer? What's causing it?" Well, let's talk about what's causing it. What are we doing to cause it? Uh, we're going to be interviewing Professor Thomas Seafried um, for the cancer portion of our documentary. And chronic inflammation, that's all he keeps talking about. Poor metabolic health, chronic inflammation. You do it for long enough, it damages the mitochondria and you end up with cancer. So it's just. So yeah. ask him about the infection angle as yeah. kind of a, as a potential trigger for the chronic inflammation. And I'd love to talk with him sometime about this and you know, because it's kind of like a missing piece of the story as far as I'm seeing right now. And maybe the reason why it's not discussed that much is that it has not yet been, you know, it's, it's hard to study a chronic low level kind of simmering infection, yeah. right? And for instance, people weren't even aware of these brain infections till, you know, it's, it's really kind of coming out in the research community now as a cause of, of dementia. Uh, but yeah, I think, I think, um, we're all, another piece that we're going to have to think about really carefully is mitochondrial function, right. And how the, 
seed oils and excess sugar, poison mitochondrial function, right? And then that's a big reason for depression and anxiety, right? Is that the mitochondria in the brain cells. Oh, and I wanted to also mention uh, Chris Palmer, right? He's the one that's really focusing on um, mitochondrial energy production and how diet affects that, right? And his book called Brain Energy, very kind of timely and similar to Georgia Ede's book that came out just like about a year later, right? Is just saying like, you know, change your diet, change your mind, exactly like Dr. Ede says, right? You And she's also at Harvard, like Dr. Chris Palmer. And what's really extraordinary to me is that Dr. Palmer has been able to reverse like total, like frank schizophrenia, somebody that had been schizophrenic for like 30 years in an institution, not able to function. She went on keto, just keto, not even carnivore. She went on keto to lose weight, lost a hundred pounds, but then was normal and it, able to go out and live on her own. Until that's ex died. that is absolutely extraordinary, and ev that should be on everyone's radar. I I have a someone close to me that suffered from schizophrenia, and that is one of the most scariest things in the world. It's hard for us to understand how someone could be seeing and hearing things and thinking people are after them. But to those individuals, they 100% without a doubt believe those things are happening. Like what a terrifying existence. And this person you're mentioning for 30 years, tr probably tried every medication under the sun and oh, did nothing. Yeah. And just the you know, nutrition. They put them on uh, clozapine. And, um, my, you know, I mentioned my, my husband who died. He has a brother, an older brother, Jay, who is schizophrenic and became schizophrenic and had a break from reality right a week before his 17th birthday. And he's been institutionalized his whole life for schizophrenia. They keep him on this clozapine. And you know, what it does is it just knocks him out so that he, you know, kind of sits there almost catatonic much of the day. So if you visit him, you know, be right before he has the medication, he'll be agitated and worrying about these, all these things he's imagining, you know, Whereas if you visit him two hours after he's had it, he's just sitting there and not talking, not moving, mm -hmm. right? So what are they doing? They're just knocking these people out and taking away all their ability to move and function just so that they won't be troublesome. Yeah. But really, they could just be putting them all on beef and eggs and some fraction of, I think they'd all get substantially better in terms of their symptoms. And some of them, like this woman, might completely heal. And, you know, it's, so the way that we are treating people that have mental illness, which is, it's not, is it really mental illness or just illness, right? Right, right. I think it's just illness. And personally, I think schizophrenia can be caused by um, infections of the brain, especially fungal, because fungal, those species like really directly eat sugar, right? Yeast, mm. right, is an example. Candida albicans is, is an example of a fungus that causes, you know, we, it, I um, have a colleague at Baylor. Um, he's a really great MD, PhD immunologist, and he's been studying human brains where people died either with dementia or quote unquote healthy, right? So control brains. And what he has found by analyzing this brain tissue and seeing what in, is living in the brain tissue of these deceased people, basically every single born human, even if they're only a toddler, has a, a, a colonized brain. Their brain has fungus and bacteria in it. Mm. And those eat sugar, okay? But a pre-born person, someone that died before they were born, they, their brain truly is sterile. So it's not just a contamination issue in the laboratory. All these brains have fungus and bacteria growing in them. So if you want to keep your brain sharp and keep your mood good, the most important thing you want to do is you want to provide nutrition to your human tissue and that's beef and eggs, butter, right? All the things that we're made of, that's what we should be eating. And don't feed, you know, 
the organisms that are infecting your body, uh, you know, they're just trying to live just like you, but what do they want? They want sugar, right? Right. Do uh, not give them sugar. <laughs> yes. Stop the sugar. That is so interesting. Oh, this is just fascinating. I'm learning so much right here. I One, one of the things this makes me think about more is we're talking about mental health and, and things like that. We were talking earlier about you, you have so many things that change when you start eating a proper human diet. It's hard to keep track of them. One of them for me, I know I mentioned this before, was like I knew I had brain fog before I started carnivore. But then when I really got into it, I realized the extent of the brain fog I had. Someone said to me, you can't see the fog until you're out of the fog. I was like, that is so true because it was yes. much worse than I expected. In terms of this documentary, is one of the things I was thinking about, like, does humanity need healing? And then I, I think, of course, with just mental health issues alone, there's like a billion people suffering from mental health issues. It's probably underreported. But then you look at cancer and heart disease and all of these other issues. But if you put all of that aside and just go with the the social norm that everything, oh, it's just fine. Things are, everyone's overweight and everyone's has diabetes. Everything's just fine. You know, it just becomes this new normal sort of thing. If I went along with that, there's still this thing where I believe that most of humanity and the standard American diet, they're walking around in this brain fog where it, it's almost like an impairment. It's almost like you had a couple of drinks of wine or something. Yeah. That's how it was for me anyway. I was stammering. I couldn't find my words, like confused. And I'd get home and I like if I did some work that day or whatever, I'm on the couch and I'm done. Like I had hopes and dreams and goals. I've got kids. I should be out kicking a soccer ball. I'm like, I could barely get through the day. I don't feel like that on carnivore and I'm doing way more now than I did before. So that's, that was part of the name with the name of the documentary healing humanity. I'm like, I think humanity just needs healing because most of humanity, I think right now on the standard American diet, they're just impaired. They're, they're just going along to get along. What a shame. If you do that your entire life, you blink your eyes and all of a sudden, if you make it to an old age, you're like, I was just in a fog this whole time. Like I didn't even really experience things as I could have. Right. And think about how now that you feel so good, you feel energetic, positive. You, I also just feel like so, you know, positive and loving towards all the people around me. Like I can just be like a lot, a better friend, you know, a better life partner for, you know, my new significant other, Brian, who's doing carnivore now. And, you know, he's already had a great improvement in his mood as well. And, you know, we, we just have so much to offer and that's what you're doing, right? You, you never intended to do this. Like, can you imagine the way you were before when you were sitting in the dark by yourself, not interacting? Could you ever have imagined you'd be out here like leading in a way, you know, you're one, I would say the top leaders in this community, just because of your attitude, like you have such a great attitude and you're willing to talk to anybody and, you know, you're a great listener and a great talker. And in fact, I love it. I want to say how much I appreciate, you know, uh, the videos that you periodically make where you, you, you'll you sum up your whole journey in kind of an efficient way in about half an hour. And because I have really sent those out to a lot of people because, you know, they're very concise. They're, it's dramatic. You know, you show the picture of yourself when you started and where you are now. And, um, let me ask you an important question, because I've been doing this four years. You've been doing it one year, and I still feel like I'm getting healthier and healthier. <laughs> you feel that? Do you still feel yourself getting healthier? A hundred percent. And thank you for saying all those nice things earlier, but a hundred percent. And when I was on month three, I asked Dr. Chafee, I'm like, would, would you be willing to participate in our documentary? And during that conversation, I said to him, I've never felt better in my entire life. And he said, just wait a minute. It's going to get even better than that. I thought he was, I thought he was exaggerating. I, I, I don't, I'm like, I don't care if it stays the same. I'm happy. But going from that three months to six months to a year now, it just gets better and better. The sleep is better. The energy is better. And there's something to what you said. I, I couldn't put my finger on it, but it's, I have like this gratitude. I'm just so thankful where I don't know if I didn't have the energy to be thankful before, but it, it seems like that's a common thread with carnivores. They're very grateful and thankful and kind of in the moment. And I think it's almost like a, a spiritual attunement, you know, we're like, because I believe that all of us humans, 
you know, we're, I, this is my personal spiritual belief, but I believe we're all connected to each other. Like in some spiritual way, we are all one and we're connected to God and this whole planet, you know, we're, we're one, we're connected. And I think that's why, you know, when you're in a room full of really healthy carnivore people, right? You feel this incredible energy because you're all in tune with each other. You're healthy and you all have that positive energy. That's what we could have, you know, like it's kind of like, you remember that Coke commercial we, that was so touching when we were kids, have a Coke and a smile. And, you know, I'd like to teach the world and all that, but really it's not Coke. They need to be drinking, right? They, <laughs> right. they need to be eating the proper human diet, as Dr. Barry would say, and, uh, you know, filtering their water, making sure they don't have bisphenol A or any bisphenol S or any of these plasticizers in the water they're drinking. And, um, you know, just keep yourself very, keep your life and everything that goes into your body, like super simple. Right. Beef. I also like oyster. I have seafood sometimes and I'm just kind of, I want to do what I think you've done. You know, you, you did lion diet for a long time, right? You just did beef, but, but when did I, one thing that has confused me about your journey and I'm curious about is, um, eggs. How, how have you essentially gone to the Dr. Chafee way? Cause he doesn't even have salt, right? He just has beef and water and the guy, you know, is just so amazingly healthy. Have you tried just beef and water? Not eat? he doesn't even do salt. I, I don't think I can give up salt. I, I did lion diet for 60 days, uh, but I kept the salt, just beef, salt, and water. Um, and then I went back to carnivore. Actually, while we were filming Bill in Alaska, it was kind of tricky getting meat. And my daughter kept making bacon. So I went back. <laughs> and then I did it again recently for 16 days, just beef, salt, and water. I have yet to, um, and I didn't do eggs during that time. Uh, yeah, I have yet to give up salt. When I heard Dr. Chafee said, I'm like, oh, come on. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what, what's left? Like, what are we going to be? What's next to go on the list? Um, so, yeah, I haven't, I haven't done that yet. But um, I, felt, I felt incredible on lion diet, though. I felt really good. Okay. It's really interesting to me that Dr. Chafee, who's been doing this like eight years, right? He decided to just stick with pure muscle meat, no organs, no eggs, and just be so simple. And, you know, I have to say, it makes me curious if there's like yet another, oh, and this was something Dave Mack said when I talked to him the second time and we were kind of having more of a back and forth conversation he said that Dr. Chafee told him that 90% of the amazing health improvement is when you take out the last 5% of things from the diet. Whoa. I wow. know. That hit me pretty hard. So. Wow. Can you That's imagine something. feeling even better, like better than you do? I mean. I feel like I, I've got enough. I got what I deserve. I can't, I can't handle anymore, but I can't imagine. <laughs> That's the thing too, is when you hear and then you see. Dr. Chafee versus my other doctors, not shaming them, but my other doctors were overweight and they weren't very healthy and they were giving me advice. <laughs> then you look at Dr. Chafee, you're like, I kind of want to emulate that guy, not just because he looks great, but I don't know anyone working harder than that guy. He's doing neurosurgery, neurosurgical resident, and then like more YouTube videos than I'm doing, which I thought I was doing a lot. He's got nutrition stuff on the side. He's speaking at conferences all over the place. And every time I'm like, do you mind if we could do a video on this topic? Sure. Like every single time. It's amazing. Next level. Does, next level. Yeah. And he does Q&A for like an hour and a half. And it's like really useful, meaty discussion. You know, like you can learn a lot from other people's questions and his answers to them. So I've listened to quite a few of those. And yeah, he's a, it's amazing how much energy he has. And, you know, that's. That's a man that's living on just beef. And no salt. Just I beef love it. Water. That's crazy. So, it's incredible. So I have a question for you. This one is something that initially when I said I'm going to do the documentary, it's going to be the carnivore diet documentary because I'm seeing all these amazing results from doing the carnivore diet. But then as I got further along into it, I, I'm, I'm more like, what is going on here? I feel like it's just that we're returning more to what is natural when you account for all those other things we discussed, like the pesticides and forever chemicals. And it's like, you can't even eat a piece of fruit now. Even if you eat an orange now and you can get one that doesn't have pesticides and glyphosate, all this stuff on it, 
the nutrients that was in the soil like 60 years ago, there's a lot of nutrients and minerals in the soil that would make it into the orange. There's hardly any of that anymore. So you're barely getting nutrients out of it. I guess long story short, I I love technology. You're a professor of bioengineering. We're using technology. I'm always using technology. But it almost seems to me like we just need to return more to what is natural. And then when I think, well, what is natural? Is natural the opposite of technology? I, I don't know. I, and I don't know how that would even work. I don't know how you would even reverse some of those things. I have some good friends that are Amish as well. But yeah. unfortunately, the standard American diet has even crept into their nutrition. A lot of them are eating just junky sugar, bakery food and stuff like that. But uh, I don't know if you have any thoughts on. I on do. That. You know, I honestly and essentially, you know, my research, right, is is focused on like, let's prevent dementia whether it's Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's by taking a, a, a natural approach. Um, and, and I think what that's going to come down to, right, is um, clean, a very clean diet. I think beef and eggs is the way to go. Beef, butter, and eggs. I'm too lazy to make bacon most of the time myself, but other people do. And then, you know, really avoiding to the extent possible, even avoiding antibiotics when you can you know, because that really can mess people up, right? Like, uh, like what happens when you take antibiotics is you'll often kill the good bacteria and leave the bad ones behind. And some people will end up with a chronic C. difficile gut infection, which is something really hard to eradicate. Although carnivore seems to eradicate it, right? I've seen that in a lot, some people's stories. Like, it seems like um, the natural approach is going to be what makes people healthiest. And when we realize that, are we, you know, are we really going to have, are, are we going to want these industries that we currently have? Are we going to want them to exist and be putting so much of our societal resources into things that are not good for us? You know, I, that, that is something we're going to have to think really seriously. And when you, when you take the, the term bioengineering, and you just think of it in the largest possible context. You think about how should how should we as a group of people engineer and design our own society, right? Mm. I personally, if I was king of the world, queen of the world, you know what I'd do? I mean, I'd have us back to like mostly ranching. You know, I'd get rid of all the grain monocropping. I don't, I really, I would get rid of grain. I would have the vast open grasslands of North America again, and I would have bison and cattle grazing on them. And, you know, I'd be, you know, and I think all the animals should be treated humanely and live as, you know, chickens should be free range, you know, scratching and pecking, and eating bugs. Cows should be eating grass. Oh, and I can just show you. Let me show you something cool, Carrie. Yeah. Where I am at right now. So I'm in Ferndale, California, which is uh, Northern California. I'm right now on a 500 acre. Let's see if you can see behind me. See all those beautiful cat. Those are black Angus cattle. Grazing. Oh, beautiful. Wow. I, uh, so I, I rent this house. It's on a 500 acre cattle ranch and the owner of this ranch in Westfall, you know, he's been ranching here for, and he, did you know that 500 acres can only accommodate about 30 cows? They're all about to have in the next three or four weeks. But you know, this is in my view, right? Right. That we should all be and seeing cattle you also have neighbors that have cattle right yeah it looks very similar to what you just showed me and it i tell you every time i drive by i'm like this is how could what's more natural than this just cattle grazing in a field beautiful green grass field i i get that comment from people a lot of time like oh we could never sustain if everyone went carnivore and i'm like well maybe under the current situation where you look around here it's just corn fields everywhere just gmo corn, 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 corn for miles right. put some cows there let them let them go back uh, yeah it's I, I love your answer on that one because that that's similar to mine too uh i'm right. so blessed and I'm a chemical engineer look i i'm a chemical engineer i personally 
I don't have a problem with petroleum. Uh, I, I taught, you know, petroleum distillation for seven years because I started out as a chemical engineering professor. And I can tell you when we, whether we're talking about a large ranching operation or petroleum products, chemical engineers, we know how to take care of waste if we just simply decide to do it properly. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think ranching is something very natural. The waste fertilizes the land and enhances it. And for, I mean, there, we need to go back to a simpler way of life and we need to stop making all these food products that are poisoning people. And that includes, you know, when you're making, when you have fields and fields of corn and soybeans, right? You have to spray all kinds of stuff on that. And that's what's making people sick, including yeah. making animals sick, right? We got to go back to, we got to focus on cleaning up our environment, getting rid of the chemical contamination and getting grazing animals back on the land. I don't, tell me, okay, Carrie, tell me, I'm trying to think of it. What do we need corn for? What do we need soy for? Tell me. I don't need it for anything. <laughs> I don't need it for anything. And I don't think we should, cows aren't supposed to be eating corn and soy. Right. Right. Yeah. The cows that I uh, get from down the road, they're just grass fed grass. They're eating grass. It's yeah. it's like the most natural thing in the world. You just humans just got to step back a little bit. I mean, there's still a lot of work to do, obviously, but step back a little bit, let them eat the grass and go from there. That's why I always tell people that say, oh, if everyone went carnivore right now, I'm like, well, if it happened this instant. But if people when people gradually start becoming more carnivore and demanding good grass fed grass finished humanely raised beef there's going to be more demand for it there's going to be more money there there's going to be more people that are going to want to do it and maybe we could stop doing some of that other stuff like the corn and all of these fields worth of stuff that end up in boxes as processed garbage and pop tarts i mean all that stuff essentially comes from <laughs> plants pop tarts come exactly. from plants. they're not coming from meat like all, doritos come from plants it all comes from plants i mean i just think if if i could do one thing like live my life over again you know, go back to when I was like 11 years old. If I had known this then, you know, I was a smart kid and very determined. I, I would have totally done this. If I'd known that I would have been, you know, in great shape and feeling like a million bucks, I would have done this my whole life. And I even, you know, I've accomplished a lot in my life, but it would have been even better if I'd been able to feel this good the whole time. And that's a gift that we can give our children now that yes. you're giving your children and your family. And we're all just like these beacons of light and we're going to spread it. And, you know, in the end, people are going to stop wanting this terrible food. Yes. I, I, I hate to say, I'm, I think we're, we're in for some turbulent years ahead of us, but hopefully when we go through this transition, we're going to come out, the other side and people are going to realize, Hey, you know, we got to go back to a natural way of living. Yeah. I love it. hundred percent. And the turbulent years we're about to go through, I'm much happier going through them as a carnivore than <laughs> yeah. before. It's like, bring it, bring it on. Let's go. We could do this. Bring it on. This has been great. I can't believe we've already been talking for an hour. This has been just fascinating, interesting. This is one of the uh, more interesting conversations I've ever had. So thank you so much. Uh, you have an open invite. If you ever want to come on again, I know you did the two videos with Dave. If you want to come on again, I'd love to have you. And if there's yeah. ever anything I could do for you, just let me know. Definitely. You know, I, I, I really want to start speaking up and being a, a strong part of this community and just helping advocate to bring this change about, you know, more, more quickly so that more people can feel great. Right. I I'd love to, if you're interested, I could put you in contact or maybe you have been already. Uh, but like Dr. Baker, he's got a pretty good podcast too. I sent Dante from Frigno freedom. I'm like, you should interview this guy. You should interview. I don't know if you've done anything with Dr. Baker. If you're interested. I'd love to talk with Dr. Baker. Yeah. I'll, I'll shoot an email after this, if that's okay. Just do a little yeah, introduction. I'd be grateful. I'd be he grateful. would love to have you on there for sure. Um, and if uh, yeah. I ever come out to Wisconsin, I'd love to visit the famous Montello Theater and yes. be of your family. Oh, that would be wonderful. And and likewise, if I'm ever out in California, I'll let you know. We're, we're going to be out there at some point filming. Yeah, um, definitely. We'll come, 
you know, I, I'd love to, to, to meet you in person and join a carnivore get together. And, uh, you know, and we, we just all have to network work with each other and this is going to just spread like wildfire. Yep. I, and, it already is like, I'm so thankful. I, I actually, I caught the video though, but that Dave sent me an email introducing us together. It's that carnivore network. It just keeps growing. So I'm so thankful that he introduced us. It's, this has just been wonderful. Yeah. And when we, we're planning on going all around the United States to film people and then also do a meetup. So, and I would love to do one out in your neck of the woods for sure. So. Yeah, definitely. I can help uh, organize it, um, you know, for, for the Bay area. I I'm in the Bay area. Awesome. So Stanford is about an hour South of San Francisco, close to a town called Palo Alto. Right. Yeah. So, and it's a beautiful area. I live, I live up in the Redwoods. Oh, and beautiful. So I, I, you know, hopefully, um, you know, give my greetings to your to your family, your your wife and your daughters, and uh, you know, I hope you guys all just keep keep uh, fighting the good fight. You're you're doing amazing things. Thank you so much, Annalise. This has been wonderful, and I really appreciate all your nice words too. And like I said, open invite. Would love to talk to you some more in the future. Okay, we'll keep in touch. All right, Thank Carrie, you. you take care. You too. Bye. Bye.